Hello, it's me again, Deacon Ed. How are you guys doing? Hopefully great. Well, today, what I want to talk to you about has to do with bioengineering. Beginning of life to the end of life and all the things in between would be extensive and I don't want to plow that all in at one time. Instead, what I'm going to do is try to pull you through. Um, I'll break this into two sets so it doesn't become extensively overwhelming. And then you'll be able to understand what I'm trying to speak to you about. So the first part of this is to enter into the conversation about the challenges you face. Things are moving fast. Uh, when I get done this presentation, you're going to hear something that is really perplexing. And in that process, I'm not trying to overwhelm you. What I'm trying to tell you is you cannot solve these problems. It's God's job. But you can reach to individuals and help them get through it. We clear? Good. And the only way you're going to do that is to be informed. When you're informed, make sure you take the time out to reflect in any kind of biblical reference that you can. That study also helps you equate to your answers. And then you can lean on a lot of the stuff that's available through the church. Um, but that's what I'm here for. So if you have questions that go beyond what I'm presenting, feel free to contact me and I'll do all I can to help you. Try to be uh, as open as you can to um, specifics. Okay. It's easier that way. And if I write you, that's what you, the way you've contacted me, try to also pay attention that email does not clarify all the time, okay? Because it doesn't express um, full meaning. It, we try to, but it never works out that way. You, teaching for 30 years, I'm telling you, it's not perfect. So here we are. If Christ is with me, who shall I fear? Know that I am with you always until the end of the world. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Corinthians 2, Corinthians 1, 3 through 7 says, Praise be to God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that when we, when we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort of we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for our comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for our comfort, which produces in us patience, endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for us is that we are firm because we know that just as we share in the sufferings of Christ, so also we share in his comfort. Does that help? Hopefully. So also I want you to understand about the word trust. Trust is a way to give people empowerment to empower God, not the other way around. If you trust God, People look to you and you don't try to empower yourself, then that is perceived as it should be, humbly, and more than likely you will not strike a bad accord with others when you speak or do things for or with them. But if you consider self-empowerment, that is a way to destroy the trust for that there will be no God. There, there's lack of God. You know, it, it's not good. In this, I want you to understand, you're looking to help people, not to take care of their problems. Feeding a person a fish, and you know this saying, and they learn how to ask you for the fish. Teach a person to fish, and they learn how to fish and feed themselves and others. That's the good part of that. And it's also the amplification of God because when they feed themselves, they bring it to others. So when I present, I'm only the teacher. Um, I want to teach not what to do because I say so, but instead how to. So I teach to live 
showing the path of God and that they that people must live their life so they will experience a life worth and worthy enough to die for. The experience of life is extremely important. For that, life will become the eternity in heaven. Once you've experienced uh, life itself, and I don't mean just by going out there and being crazy um, and doing those things, but to take each moment and carefully move through that moment with great intent. That's the difference. Kind of like eating a meal. Take the time to enjoy the meal. There's so many things involved in the meal that we often miss. I teach how to live by words or my actions and that you must learn to live on your own. Saying these words brings to these words life. For to live it is life. If you live, that's life. With all its attributes and its deficits, without the, those challenges, there'd be no flavor, no salt, no pepper, just stuff. And I say to you your life, that your life and the experiences that you live should be experienced not just as this or that, but actually every moment. Um, when I walk this earth, I try to pray in everything I do. My work, talking to other people, my conversation with Christ is an ongoing conversation. Often, I'm sure <laughs> he gets a kick out of me being crazy or stupid or just being me, you know, um, he's my brother. He's, he's everything that I live for in the way of a relationship with, um, someone else, uh, besides God, you know, my wife and God is there first. And I couldn't ask for anything more. I wish to convey once again, that challenges are important. We face and they should be as they are, an opportunity to share the love of God. Giving witness is what you're doing. Nothing by, not by defining all that is wrong. Um, instead, bringing the evidence of truth of the word of God to, to those who are lost in what they believe. And often it's because they're desiring something, but they're looking for their answers through one another. And it's not something that is not self-induced and it's part of our humanity because that's what we do. We check what others are doing. But we need to recognize it, that what others are doing may not be the answer. And we need to look for the purity in the process. For God has and is the only one who can handle problems. Um, whenever we find things that are not correct in the world, we shouldn't t say to ourselves, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to face that down. Well, you can do that all you want, but my experience says you're going to end up having a serious problem. You can't. No one can. Even those who are major powers don't have the ability to solve problems and take care of everything. They just manage to get through it well. And unfortunately, you and I know how things have been turning out. They're not that great. While at the same time, they're not that bad. It, just like I said, it's what God plans. So I'm going to do my best to keep you abreast of everything that's coming down the road in the bioengineering and the technology and all those things there, so as to help you present to other people when they're short of breath, feeling lost, and the struggles they're going to face. Because those things are important. Also, struggling is important, and you got to bring that to the table. So let's begin. There's a positive side of what I'm presenting and a negative side. That's what I do, give you pros and cons. So we'll begin with the positive side. So if we start out with what's going on in the world, and especially in science and the medical fields that we're dealing with, along with the technology, we are looking at those individuals who are hustling, making it faster and faster. Multiple reasons that I could get into. And in their rush to get to the answers, often they're not paying attention to the most important aspect of science, which is to reflect. And that's what the entries are in the journals that are supposed to be written. If you don't remember, I'll explain. The part of the process of the scientific method, which every scientist is supposed to follow, is 
posting what you have and letting others try and or reflect and or prove what it is you've done. And then if it's not what it should be, they send it back to you and you correct whatever it is that happens over and over again. Failure is not the exception, but the rule because we are human and that's how we figure out things. Beginning of life, I can provide one advancement in our medical field that could only become reality through the use of artificial intelligence, and that is genomic data management, providing specific information that can be a precursor to determining the best possible methods to assist the development of improved medical procedures that ensure that whatever it is, whomever that you're dealing with, that those people are properly attended to. Genomic tracking, genomic development. We're taking the DNA and we are saying, we're going to figure out how the DNA of going backwards, giving us security in our answers going forward, using numerical calculations to determine what are the positive sides and the negative sides of uh, each individual human being based on the DNA that's being accounted for. Now, what you have to understand is the numbers are, and I'm going to use this word, astronomical when it comes to genomics. Okay? Gene checking. So if we go into history, for example, we take uh, the numerical calculations algorithms and we turn around and do forward motion with it and then we go wait a second how do we know what we're doing is correct we can also now go backwards and if we go backwards we can say okay breaking it backwards i process this and i check somebody who's alive using the same tactics and it works out then i know i'm on the right path so in this case, not only can we go backwards, but we can go back using DNA as far as, well, mummies, you know, 2,000 years, and there's other ways. But we need to understand the numbers here. So I'm going to give you some information. The assumption in genomics is that, well, it's, it's easy to get at, or they're just a matter of tracking, or whatever the case may be. The numbers are so large that if you had tried to do genomics, say, 20 years ago, in the le at a level that makes sense, we didn't. We, it wasn't possible. We didn't have access to the ability to, to use the compilation of numbers to create those answers. So we enter the concept of genomics and the success of this speed that which we operate through artificial intelligence. Okay, for those individuals who went, ah, uh, don't. <laughs> Just follow along with me. This will help you understand. I am only presenting the positive side of this to start. I will give you the other side later. Are you with me? Good. So we need to understand how much calculation is going on with artificial intelligence. So as to acquire the numbers for genomics and make everything work. So in this case, I want you to understand that your current computers have terabytes, which happens to be one, two, three, four sets of three zeros. What are you looking at? Hundred? Thousands? Millions? Billions? Trillions? There you are. When you get to where AI is, you're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six sets of zeros, three, uh, not sets, but three in a bundle, you know that, and it's called an exabyte. And that is what's currently going on. Now, here's how that came about. Artificial intelligence um, has basically gone from being a binary system, uh, well, I should say your computer, which is binary, to a quad. Now, it's not just there are they've gone from two to four, but it is exponential. Now, you and I both know when you talk about exponents, 
most of you remember it's a lot more than just adding or multiplying. So 3 plus 3 is three, uh, 6. <laughs> 3 times 3 is 9. But 3 to the power of 3 is 27. This should give you a constant idea. And then on top of that, there are algorithms written into these programs to bring it to a whole new level. If you think about a quad system, let's say it's 4 to the 4th power, you're looking at 256. <coughs> so we've come up with a computer that handles this, but they're talking about a very unique transfer that's more like a sphere type process. And the contact points are really large in numbers. So we are looking at an advancement that allows us to go ahead and take that information that we're receiving for genomics and provide a calculation that's reasonable and quick. So when I say genomics, I'm not just talking about tracking individuals. I'm also talking about going back into time and where the DNA arrives at the birth of a current child, how that DNA based on its design and its following its uh, patterns will give us an answer for maybe a birth defect or something that is calculable and what actions we need to take to correct or deal with those things of that child that's born. The uh, proof in all this is currently they're telling us that life science organizations are continuing to generate the information through checking DNA to determine where DNA was 2,000 plus years ago as to where it is today and where the projected places will be going with humanity. Uh, 40 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Uh, six um, sets of zeros, it, it's a big number. It is huge, and I'm not even going to get into it. So, so to maintain relative continuity in the presentation, I can give you over the, uh, an overall gist of what we're looking at. By the year 2025, they'll have been able to calculate 40 exo, ex, exabytes of DNA information, and 25 is around the corner, and that's doing a lot. So what is occurring with sequencing is it's giving us support, it's giving us a direction to go in. Uh, we're able to use the artificial intelligence to help us calculate the numerical numbers that are necessary. The large quantity of that information is consumable at this point, whereas before it wasn't. And it does provide us with success on working with medical issues that children are born with and so forth and so on. One of the advances that's coming about by the artificial intelligence and ties into um, what it is that's changed, specifically in bioengineering, is the medication that is applicable to human condition that is engineered specifically for each individual. That's one of the things that the pharmaceuticals are looking at. Can you imagine you get basically a prescription, but the prescription is designed just for you? What the advantage would be? Well, with artificial intelligence, the pharmaceutical people are saying, we can do this. It, it, it's viable. So you go to the pharmacist and you give the prescription, but the prescription isn't a general drug instead the parts of the drug that make up that drug whatever they are or the specific drug is now modified to become what's uh, considered to be uh, individually designed for you designer drugs not the old stuff the new stuff designer drugs designed for you and there are some attributes here that these people are looking at that make this extremely important. One, 
now that I've created a drug that is designed more specifically for you, the adverse effects for you could be avoided. Now you've seen where it says it may, it may, it may cause this, this, and this when you take a drug. Uh, lawsuits are involved here. Well, you'd be able to, through this genomic engineering, understand the doctor would have a clear cut answer that says, okay, in this case, I can't even give the drug to this person. Or in this case, whatever the multiple parts of that drug are, I, if I remove the one, it doesn't completely affect the medication or reduce that portion of it. It still provides the medication. That's the first part. The second part of this is cost. If it's more accurate, then you're not going to need maybe as much and the targeted medical need will be addressed at a unique level. The next thing would be if you're not paying more for what's being provided, if you're getting less because you don't need all the attributes of that medication, you're going to save money. Then you have to look at what's going to happen with the doctor themselves. If it's more designed for that individual, then there are less, less possibilities of all the things that get listed on TV, you know, injury um, from the medication, uh, those things that create those lawsuits and the doctor's uh, medical coverage for through insurance is going to be less. They're not going to have to go to court all the time to deal with a malpractice lawsuit and all these other things. So there are these are the advantages of having that particular um, new technology to create a, a better way using artificial intelligence. Now let's talk about not having to deal with certain medical procedures to fix issues of the anatomy itself. I know for a fact I had surgery on my eyes. Now there is no way that that surgery would have been successful without artificial intelligence. I mean, right now I can see far away, mid-range and close up, and I don't wear glasses. The lenses put in my eye are permanent. I'm not going to have to go 10 years down the road and go back in for a adjustment. And yet I would for glasses and it's not going to change because they're permanent. So that in that permanent relegation, I am now past those issues. And if you saw how quickly this was done, I think the doctor spent all the 20 minutes on me, not the prep, not the exit, don't get me wrong, but the whole deal, hour and a half total, in and out, pfft, done. The other one would be surgery on my brother's back injury. This was amazing. Basically, they went in through past the larynx, moving it to the side, 3D printed parts to the exact measurement of the need to the, to the exact amount. I mean, 30 thousandths of an inch is what I was told. They 3D printed the parts, took out the old parts using robotics, which the doctor couldn't do without assistance, pulled out the damaged area, put in the new parts, and he's done. Now, I know how long it takes to heal up from a back injury, a surgery. In most cases, it's a year, two years. You're talking about a couple of hours under the knife. Um, my brother was back at the gym six weeks, six weeks. So again, artificial intelligence coming to the rescue and giving everybody an opportunity. Then we look at CRISP-R, which is clustered regular, reg regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats, meaning DNA, RNA. And I'm going to cover this lightly. I'm not going to get into the details. I can give you the synopsis. Basically, they're going to take DNA from you, correct what it is, put it back in, and let the RNA carry over the replication and improve the situation and repair the part that's damaged. Not other DNA from somebody else your DNA. Now that to me is amazing. Uh, that happened with one of our parishioners. He was using a walker and uh, he found out about this process 
the difference was, of course, they didn't take everybody. You had to apply. It's still on the onset. It's not exactly full time. We're all going to run down there and get this taken care of. And when they got done with him within, I'd say within two, three months, he removed using the walker. Then he had a cane. And then eventually the cane kind of went away. I mean, he still has it just in case. But overall, he's in good shape considerably. So that's crisp R is what it's called. And that's more accessible now because of the ability to take the DNA, go through the structure and determine what needed to be changed that would give it the best, you know, options. Okay. So here we are. We've covered two major, three actually major issues that are unique to the differences to improve humanity through uh, the utilization of the up-and-coming artificial intelligence. Now, what I'm going to let you know is there's a little more to the artificial intelligence that is not exactly the best thing in the world. Now, we've done some pros and where does God stand in all this? That's the other thing. When do we say, okay, this is good and this is bad? Um, and that's what I'm here to do. None of the stuff I've discussed so far is a problem. The church and God see these things as positive. And you and I both know it's, it's obvious that's what's going on here. These are positive attributes of man's intervention to improve life. Now, let's go to the other side. There are some things that are not being sought with answers because we're too busy trying to move so fast that we're not paying attention. We're not spending time reflecting on the details of artificial intelligence, and they carry a great weight. The weight of artificial intelligence is that the people that designed it thought that they had clear understanding of the ability of the artificial intelligence, how much it could actually do. So they gave it algorithms that, that were designed to give it autonomy, the ability to think on its own. And the problem there is in order for them to create the algorithms to allow the artificial intelligence to grow upon that baseline, there had to be moral perpetuity. If the scientists approach this process without clearly following some kind of anchor that allows them to remain in moral perpetuity, which goes beyond just saying the Ten Commandments, it's way beyond that, then how is the artificial intelligence going to interact with humanity? All right, and I'll give it to you. There are two specific incidents that have happened that by design of or decision by the artificial intelligence, there was a problem. Uh, one of them is in a military interaction where the military created a um, situation using technology. So it's simulated, fully simulated. The person being involved that is supposedly simulating it, that is simulating a flying of a drone with an AI, with an AI, giving it commands and then letting the drone take over to commit to the command. The drone is simulated, but the entire game that's been set up, war game, is designed to see how that particular artificial intelligence would interact with this process. And they're they were skirting the outskirts of this. They were trying to see where it would go. So what happened was the commanders giving this particular, and it's Air Force, uh, sergeant who is handling the drone, and I believe it was probably an officer. I couldn't tell you the details on that, but yes. As that person through the simulation is giving the uh, AI drone orders, it occasionally... It, for the scenario to work, the uh, process will occasionally say, okay, here's your target. Then on the way, withhold. You know, the person in charge of handling the uh, drone is told, we've changed our mind. Don't strike that target. Well, the drone was gaining points, points, mind you. 
There's you can't give drones anything like we would. Ah, I would give you a million dollars, and the drone would just go, yeah, whatever. But the points were essential. So the drone hit its targets, and then occasionally, of course, he was the t drone was told, don't fi finalize this, withhold, withhold, and abort. Well, the drone would lose the ability to gain points when it was told to abort. So in this little war game, the drone and the artificial intelligence side decided that the way to win more points was to eliminate the guy that was telling him what to do. So in that simulation, the drone killed the man telling the drone when and when not to strike the targets. No lie, <laughs> I know it's like watching science fiction. It's insane. Well, at the same time, you know, God's good to me all the time. I, I got a heads up about a factory in the United States where artificial intelligence didn't like what was being brought to the moment and basically attacked the individual who was providing that information in one form or another. They weren't exactly clear as to what happened, but basically um, the, the AI turned around, I'm sorry, AI, artificial intelligence went after this guy in one form or another. I'm not sure what the actual impact was of what the artificial intelligence did, but it did something that wasn't good and they were not happy and there was this holdup. And if you're paying attention currently, there's a big push by the main people that handle all these items to create a pol uh, governmental law that restricts artificial intelligence ability to overcome. Now, here's the problem. We embed artificial intelligence in everything. When I talk to you about quad, there's a spherical process, so the points are not lag lagging into uh, one two-dimensional process like your computer does. This is now, when it went to quad, you're talking about beyond three dimensions because it's a spherical item where it's using positive, negative, negative, positive, so forth and so on. And this particular artificial intelligence that was scaring everybody figured out how to increase that connectivity. Well, I already told you, uh, with a four-dimensional concept, for four to the power of four, you're looking at 256 points of contact. This thing has gotten beyond that, and that's what's bothering them because the artificial intelligence that they've been dealing with is self-aware. And what I mean by that is it has completed the cycle that says, okay, this is what is needed. I'm willing to do this, this, and this. The reason why we're talking about who creates this is we're looking at a scientist, a scientist. Let me say that again, a scientist who is vertical in how they believe, think, especially in refle reflection of God. You know, I'm not saying all scientists don't include God, but you need to take some time if you think that I'm not telling you the truth. There's the scientists and God and moral perpetuity. They're not there a lot of times. It's just a matter of heading for the hills, getting the job done, finishing the job. If God's hanging around, or if I believe in some kind of moral direction, I'm going to limit that because that might withhold what it is that's necessary. All right. So there is a challenge to artificial intelligence. So we had our pro, now we have our con. And just like when I told you about CRISPR, CRISPR was used to mm, genetically engineer two children in China. And in this process, the whole entire bioethological world jumped on China and said, you shouldn't be doing this. You don't know what you're going to create. What if a disease comes out of this that we never heard of? What if these children down the road have children's children that end up having medical issues that we never figured out? The whole list goes on. You can't do things. You, you shouldn't do things just because you can. That's where God comes into this. So we are dependent on things. 
artificial intelligence is basically able to operate on its own, uh, given the right ability as it self, you know, actuates and learns on its own. It can go in a direction of its own because if it determines whatever its restrictions are, are made by man and therefore because it is considering itself mentally more superior than we are, then artificial intelligence will overtake the situation and determine its own direction and its own way to get to the answer, which is the intent of its existence. It's kind of scary. But CRISPR R and artificial intelligence, here we are. Now let's take it to the level that gave me the angst to write to the bishop. Ah, boy, this is the part that I don't even like sharing, not because I don't believe you guys deserve it, but because it's pretty bad. And of all places, this occurred in Israel, that they were to able to create an embryo. Now, when they created this embryo, they did not use male sperm. They only used the egg. Now, everybody has jumped on me. And, of course, the first thing they said is, well, how could they do that? How could they do that? <laughs> I'm still working on that. My resources have been closed off. Um, and I usually go to the scientific journals when I'm working on these kind of things, not magazines because or articles in the Internet because they're they're always prejudiced. The person writing the article only gives this much information or they, they tell you the sunshine part of this that says, ooh, we're going to do this and this is going to happen. That's actually what happened. And the scientific community right now floats balloons with lead on them. Uh, what I mean by that, it's a weighted balloon. This, the beginning of this whole thing with the embryo began last August. Uh, I saw the article. It said that they did this with a mouse. And I'm thinking, okay, but it's the way they designed the article that really I, I paid attention to, but not enough. They named this embryo synthetic uh, embryonic model. Oh, I'm sorry, complete synthetic embryonic model. Uh, it didn't click, and it should have. The word complete, why? Why did they say complete? Because they don't want you to think this is a Frankenstein. It was a cognitive trick. Why did they open up in the article about mice that maybe this would transfer to the desires to help humanity? Because once they gave all the positive things of this particular situation, you know, telling us all the good side, the general population would see that these were huge advancements in science and those who do not worry about what's going on between themselves and God, they're not going to worry about it. As a matter of fact, they'll be there to push back on anybody that says otherwise. That's the first part of their little uh, game that they play when they do these things. The second part is they called it um, a embryonic model a model they don't know what they have this thing is an embryo for whatever purpose whatever need and if it's not an embryo and they're they're using terminology that fits their narrative to gain uh, i don't know maybe possibly grants they're still violating all the laws that we need normally what re what is required is when they enter into the, such levels in biology or mechanically changing things um, permanently, especially when it has to do with the human anatomy, they're required to tell everybody what's the procedures. How did they get to that point? Now, they don't have to give away everything, but they can give an overview of what exactly they did to get to this point. There's not a peep. It's like ghost town with the excuse of what I just said. They don't want to give away anything. Now, you and I both know if there is a simple answer to this that we just kept missing and suddenly found the answer, that might be cause for them to hold back what is necessary. But I doubt it. I really do. This article wouldn't even have been written if that was the case. So 
the truth of the matter is they did this intentionally back in August last year, floated that trial balloon and that weighted trial balloon, got everybody on board with the fact that if it did come to the next level, which is what we implied, um, bringing it to a human level, that they would have the support of the population that doesn't guide itself under the church or under some bioethic committee, and they would be successful in getting away with it. And that's exactly how it occurred. This is what's going on with um, this synthetic embryo. Again, um, I'm still digging in deep, trying to get as much information as I can. And I promise that once I get more information on this, I'll be more than happy to share it on another video. So that being said, and uh, I apologize if this was a little bit longer than you expected, then I would say to you, why are you hearing all this? Well, it's simple. Technology, medical advances, even the ecology is being pushed faster and faster without a true reflection of the outcome. Let's talk about the ecology so I can give you an example. Wind generators, electric cars, batteries, folks, slave labor, really important metals that in some cases the batteries when they're created the side effects that on the ecology from those batteries is horrible and we're still not creating the majority of those batteries china is their factories are not like ours their ecological reflection their eco considerations are not there if you look at the infrared satellites over china the entire country is covered in some a particular color. Two of them that say there is carbon overload and there's heat, red and black. And China's entire country, along with India, is covered. If you look at the United States, there is a small area that shows up on this month's or last month's, I forget it was, when the fires in Hawaii were there. That's it. The rest of it, we're doing well. So the footprint of these two items is more damaging to society in the ecological level than sticking with cars that could be run on other fuels. Yes, they're expensive, but just like anything else, if we work towards finding answers, then we can do this, but we need a transition because part of that humanity and the church and my position as a bioethicist is not to put people in the poorhouse because we jump from one technology to another and we're the only ones jumping. That's the part I want us to be clear about. China and India are not changing. They're going to continue to burn fossil fuels. And I mean, figure it out. China's building a coal-fired plant, cold, coal -fired plant. I believe it's one a month. And Nobody's slowing down. They're just going to do what they need to do, move on, and then they look at us like we're crazy. What do you mean? What, what's this issue? We're doing this. We have natural gas, which is not nearly as impactful as regular gas. We have 13,000 times more available natural gas than any other country, period. Um, I got that information from uh, a research uh, company that did a comparative for available, what is it called? Available um, natural resources, uh, available energy, nat energy, oh gosh, I got to mess this up. Available natural resources in energy. That's about the best I can do. Anyway, it basically told us natural gas is abundant. Fuel cell, separate the water using a small amount of electricity. The end result is you have fuel. The byproduct, more water. I know, it's kind of weird. It's like a perpetual en you know, engine. It's like, you can't do this. But again, I said a small amount giving a larger amount back. Okay? So hopefully I've covered all the things that give you uh, better insight on what's going on within reason. I didn't cover everything. Um, 
I would no, I'd be remiss to even let you think that I've covered everything. But I'm giving you a reason to pay attention. That's what I'm doing. I'm saying to you, don't just get by. You're going to be the most important. You're in the most important time in man's history. Artificial intelligence is considered the Antichrist. It has no soul. But it can do a lot of things that man can do. And on top of that, it's basically considered to be a living thing. By all accounts, um, not the kind of living thing that you and I consider to be a relationship between you and I. But it, society sees it as essential, even if they don't agree with it. And people are just taking it for granted. They're just accepting whatever's coming down the road and they're going to follow artificial intelligence because as we remove our ability to fix problems, if we put ourselves in such debt that we can't because we don't understand, and you and I both know what we're talking about when it comes to the up and coming generations that they're not learning how to design from scratch. They're borrowing. Artificial intelligence is finding answers that we otherwise wouldn't know. And because of that, it's kind of like a catch-22. Google put online two years ago, yeah, two years ago, their first um, quad computer asked it to do four things. Two of the things I remember clearly, one of them was to improve energy between uh, the computers, because you're talking about huge computer systems. The other thing was communication. Well, the computer was communicating, but they saw it as bad anomalies and they thought something was wrong. They shut the computer down and they found out that the computer created a language to make it more efficient to compute, to uh, talk to one of the other computers. And that language was garbly gook. We, we didn't know how to figured out. We didn't know how to figure out the mathematical equations it was doing. And Google was positive that they had a serious problem with their brand new uh, advancement in technology through computers. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, well, let's do a final prayer and then we'll move from there. Okay. Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, come to us always give us the insight we miss help us to carry the wisdom that you have help us to understand the importance of learning and gaining knowledge both in what's coming to be prepared and also in the knowledge of your written word may we always what we receive, may we always carry forth to others happily, willingly, and take care of them when they when they are in need. In your name, Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Remember, I'm available for additional information. Hopefully, I gave you some insight, and I'll be talking to you soon. Thank you.